So welcome, my name is Carrie Morse and I'm a consultant working with Unicorn Children's Foundation and I oversee um, administration of the Special Needs Advisory Coalition meetings, which you are here with us today as a part of those meetings. We meet monthly at two o'clock on the, what is it, second Tuesday? I always get it wrong. Third Tuesday, second. Second or third? What are we? <laughs> it's a third. <laughs> third, third Tuesday um, of every month. And uh, we welcome you to come uh, every month if you wish. And we talk about special needs related uh, agenda items um, that may pertain to all ages and all disabilities. And we welcome anybody to attend. Uh, first, what we'll do is we'll go around and I'll call out uh, your name the best that I can. Um, and you'll announce yourself. You'll introduce yourself with your name. Um, if you represent an agency and any announcements that you may have, so you may have some new programs or services or um, an announcement about what you're doing in our community that would benefit others in the meeting. And so we welcome you to do so during the introduction. Once the introductions um, are finished, then I will go ahead and I'll introduce our guests today. Um, our topic is um, marketing and um, specifically publications so that uh, you all as agency representatives or um, parents or um, self-advocates can access information about programs in our area. Uh, so we thought we'd bring together some folks to talk about how to do so and spread the word about the wonderful work that you're doing. So I will get started and I'll just go through the introductions um, down my list here. Um, and I will skip through our speakers. And the first up is Alicia Young. Hey, Alicia. Carrie, she mentioned in the chat she's driving today. Gotcha. All right. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Next up, Amy. Amy Mann, would you like to introduce yourself? There's Amy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Amy. I'm the communications manager for Unicorn Children's Foundation, and I also do you know, the PR and marketing. So. Um, I've either worked with some of you in the past or look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you for Thanks, coming. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Barbara Flood. Mike isn't working. Okay, no problem. Claudia Lawler. Destiny Rawls. Yes, I unmuted myself. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Claudia. Hi, guys. Thank you for the invite. Um, my name is Claudia Lawler, and I'm the new outreach specialist for Easter Seals Early Steps. So you guys are going to see me more often at the meetings, and I will be sharing information with you guys. Wonderful, Claudia. Welcome. Thank you. Devin Mayo? Yeah, I'm, I'm Devin Mayo with Bella's Angels. Um, we're a local nonprofit that helps kids with uh, lifelong medical conditions. Wonderful, Devin. Um, thank you so much. And Erica Son. Hi, I'm Erica Son. I'm an attorney at Legal Aid in the Education Project. We help students with disabilities get services in school. And we do have a new program where we do education clinics. It's like a one-time meeting for people where we review the IEP, you know, give them some advice, we create an action plan just to kind of, you know, help them familiarize themselves with their kids' education. If you're interested, just shoot me an email. Eric, if you want to send me a flyer, that would be great. We can put it in our newsletter. I will. Thank you. All right, um, Jean Malacco. Hey, Jean. All right, we'll come back to Jean. Katie Moyet. Hey, everybody. My name is Katie. I work with ABA Centers of Florida. We provide ABA services to children from St. Lucie down to Broward County. This is also my first SNAC meeting. I'm happy to be here. And I'm super excited about the topic because I am organizing a resource fair in September 
for families that have children with autism to be able to meet community service providers. So I'm excited to learn about how to kind of market that. If any of you all are interested, I am still looking for some vendors. I will put my email in the chat. Um, and if you're interested in attending, it's free for everybody, families and vendors. So please shoot me an email if you're interested. Thanks. Thanks, Katie. And that resource fair is Boynton Beach, correct, in September? September 10th at the Arts and Cultural Center in Boynton Beach. Perfect. All right. Kim Harris? Hello, my name is Kimberly Harris. I'm the intake specialist at Vocational Rehabilitation in Unit 21D. And we help clients who have impairments or disabilities to get jobs and maintain their jobs. They also start at age 14. Thanks, Kim. Loden Coleman. Oh, well, obviously I'm not Loden Coleman, but no. I'm, <laughs> uh, I'm David Mandel. I'm actually a job coach here at Ells for Autism. Uh, I took on the responsibility for Loden. Loden is actually my supervisor, so that's why I'm here, not Loden. Uh, so thank you for having me. All right, thank you, David. Maria Gutierrez. Hello, everybody. Um, I am Maria Gutierrez for Early Learning Coalition, Palm Beach County, and I am working with the Early Intervention and Inclusion Program here. Thank you. Thanks, Maria. Maria Silva. Hello. Maria, if that's you, it's hard to hear you. You may have an unclear connection. Everyone, uh, my name is I'm with Positive Behavior Services, Florida. Uh, I'm with uh, Priscilla Bird. Priscilla, if you can jump in for me. Sorry. Priscilla, I think that we passed it to you. Yes. Hi. Good afternoon. I'm so happy to see all of you, um, your bright, shiny faces. I look forward to working with all of you. I'm with Positive Behavior Services. Maria Silva is my supervisor. Um, we're in uh, Broward and Palm Beach counties. We provide applied behavior analysis services for the area. Um, I think it would be great to do a resource um, um, function because we have a hard time trying to connect families with um, neurologists and things of that nature. So I think that's actually a great idea to have a resource fair. So um, I'm definitely going to jot down that other young lady's email. Um, but um, like you said, this is our first, our first time and I'm looking forward to working with all of you. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Of course. Millery. Hey, Millery. Good afternoon. My name is Milo Isela. I'm with the Agency for Persons with Disabilities. I'm the community liaison. I'm happy to be here. It's good to have a lot of people here to get the resources for our families. Yeah, thank you so much. And Mallory is also a great resource, so uh, include her on your list if you want anything to be emailed. She has tons of people on her email list, and we receive things every day, at least once a day, right, Mallory? So you, yes. you keep us all connected. <laughs> Um, so mark her down if you want to get word out about programs. Um, do you want to put your email in the chat, maybe, Millery, for us? Sure. Okay. Um, Natalie Eno. Hey, Natalie. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. I'm Natalie Eno, and I'm with the Easter Seals Church of Coast Early Steps program. So we serve the five counties, starting with Palm Beach all the way up to Oki and in Indian River. Good to be here. Thank you. Rachel Baker Blackwell. Hi, Rachel. Hi, how are you? Hi, Rachel Baker Blackwell, Florida Department of Health. Um, let's see, Children's Medical Services, Title V. Good to be here. Awesome, thank you, Rachel. Simone Sterling. Hello, good afternoon. Um, my name is Simone Sterling. I am a team supervisor with the Treasure Coast Early Steps Program. Um, I am based out of the West Palm Beach um, office and early steps we deal, we work with children zero to three with a variety of needs and concerns. Awesome, thank you. 
Uh, and Zippy, I saw that you introduced yourself in the chat. Do you want to come on as well? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Zippy Rosen. I'm the Special Needs Outreach Coordinator at Ruth and Norman Rails Jewish Family Services in Boca. And we recently opened up a new therapy and family resource center where we're offering different therapy, speech, OTPT. We have um, BCBAs on staff to do more like short-term parenting training, ABA. Um, we're running all kinds of groups, music classes, social skills groups for different ages. Um, kindergarten readiness, um, sensory groups, everything. We'd love to have you for a tour if you want to come down and see us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, Barbara Flood, I see that your mic is working. I believe so. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, yeah, good. Sorry about that. Um, I am Barbara Flood. I am the Senior Director of Education and Therapeutic Services at uh, the Ark of Palm Beach County. Also the principal of our now two charter schools. Um, if you are not already aware, the ARC has merged with um, Siegel Industries and also with um, um, Palm Beach Hab Center. And so we have become a very, very large agency very quickly. Um, and so with that, we also um, are now serving our middle and high school students um, at the Siegel Academy for Independent Living. So um, if anybody is, has a family or anybody who's looking for a school for their child or um, respite services, recreation services. We also have all, we now have eight group homes um, and we are providing adult day training at our North Campus in Riviera Beach and also the South Campus being the Old Palm Beach Hab Center. So um, a lot, a lot, a lot growing here, a lot happening. Um, I'm happy to be here and happy to help in any way that we possibly can. Thanks. I think about you guys in that merger all the time and think about how many wonderful services you are offering, but how big you have become in such a little time. So. Yeah, it, it has been over, very overwhelming, but, um, yeah. but amazing and the things that we're going to be able to be moving forward to. So always open for ideas and things that we can do. So, you know, reach out and let us know what is needed. Great. Thank you, Barbara. Mm -hmm. And Keith, how are you, Keith? Doing great, Gary. How you doing? Good. Good to see everybody. Um, new computer here, so it took me a little bit to figure out the mic. Um, I'm Keith Berkney, Executive Director with EmployU. We are a uh, employment service. We are partnered with Vocational Rehabilitation and Agency for Persons with Disabilities to provide employment services to both adults and youth throughout the state. Uh, we're covering 54 counties right now. Just celebrated our 10th anniversary last month. So I'm proud to say that. And uh, we've got a new office down there in Boca and uh, somebody that's been working with us for <clears throat> about, I think about four or five months now that's doing a fantastic job working with adults mostly. But uh, we also do have a youth program there for West Palm and Boca too. So thanks for having me. Awesome, thanks Keith. So uh, did I miss anyone or did anybody um, want to introduce themselves that we didn't get to? Hi, this is Patricia Falano. I'm with the Florida Department of Health Children's Medical Services, a Title V program like Rachel. Thank you for having me. Great, thank you, Patricia. So we will jump into our agenda. Um, we're first gonna start um, with Denise, and many of you know Denise, and if you don't, you should. Um, Denise's List is a wonderful resource, um, and Denise is gonna go a little bit into detail about why she started Denise's List, the need for it, maybe her personal connection. Um, and we'll get going from there because I think that Denise's story is really um, an indicator as to why it's important to share information, um, not only with families, but between agencies. And they've done such a wonderful job in doing so over the years. So um, Denise, if you'd like to get started. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you so much for having me, Carrie. This is uh, really very nice to be asked to be here. And I'll get right into it. So Denise's List started in 2001. Um, I was actually, my son was born in, my son has autism, my son Noah. He was born in 1994, we were living in New York. Of course, we had all the services in the world in New York. And um, my husband decided he wanted to move to Florida. So I had a friend who lived in Florida who said, oh, I heard about this great school called Bodwin. Come on down. And we moved down in 1997 and Bodwin was just as good. But of course, there was not much else here. 
and whatever there was, I just didn't know about it. And I, I asked a bunch of parents uh, what they knew about services, what they knew about activities, and nobody seemed to know much. Uh, I joined the Autism Society and they were wonderful, but it was mostly people who had older kids and that wasn't helping me with, with a three-year-old. So finally, in, in 2001, um, I started Denise's List. This is prior to social media. <laughs> we didn't have Facebook back in 2001. We only had listservs and Denise's list was a listserv, which is kind of like, um, for those younger people, um, it's kind of like a bulletin board where we email back and forth. And we started out with, I don't know, maybe 30 people that I had gotten from, from the Autism Society list. And eventually we grew to, I don't know, two, 3,000. What we do is we, purvey, we share information. We talk about resources. We talk about um, where to get things done, how to get things done, the process to get things done. We talk about the med waiver. Um, I, I am still shocked today when I go to adult activities with my son, my son is now 28, and people say to me, what's the med waiver? That's because there is not enough networking going on. Uh, Denise's list is all about networking. Um, it is a very heavily monitored listserv, meaning that all the, all the entries, before you post something, it goes past me. This is because over the years, I have belonged to other listservs and other groups that eventually broke up because of infighting. A lot of people arguing about things and people didn't want to hear and they left. So um, we only had that once on Denise's list, we had huge, huge um, vaccine factions versus anti-vaccine factions. And after that, we just banned vaccine discussion altogether. And uh, that seemed to work out pretty well for us. Um, if anybody needs more information about Denise's list, we do deal uh, mostly with autism. Um, but if anyone has any information to share about other disabilities, that's fine. Uh, in order to reach us, the really, really easiest thing to do is to Google Denise's list. We're the first entry on there. Uh, we used to be with Yahoo Groups. We're now with groups.io. And if anyone has any questions, let me know. If not, thanks for having me. Thank you for sharing. This is a great resource. Denise, I just have one question, um, just because I've posted in the past. Um, when doing a post on Denise's list, is it advantageous to keep it short? Um, you know, are is there an allowance for photos? I normally just use text. Uh, is, is, are there some recommendations that you have for you know, the best way to post? Um, the longer, the better. <laughs> Definitely go into detail. Definitely include pictures, attachments, anything like that. The more information you want to give us, the more information we'll be able to give back to you. OK. And I was wrong. I'm glad I asked. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Wonderful. All right, so if you all have any questions, um, Denise's email is on the website, so you can reach out to her. Um, and I'll move on our agenda. So we're going to uh, take a pause with the topic, and then we'll come back to it. Um, we have a couple speakers that are just going to share information about programs that they have. Um, so first up, Kelsey Allen. She's going to briefly share information about services provided by Superhero Kids PPEC. Hey, Kelsey. Hi everyone, it's nice to meet you. Thank you all for having me. It's my, my first MAC meeting, so very exciting. I am going to share my screen here. So just a little bit about um, Superhero Kids PPEC. So PPEC stands for Prescribed Pediatric Extended Care. Um, so we're a medical center providing skilled nursing for children ages from birth to 20 with special medical conditions all throughout Palm Beach County. We're based in Boynton Beach, right off of 95 and Wilbright. We're open Monday through Saturday um, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And our staff consists of medical personnel, including our medical director and our director of nursing who provide oversight and we're regulated by ACCA. Um, we provide tailored medical services and treatments based on the specific needs of each child. Um, some of the common conditions that we see would include you know, cerebral palsy, um, maybe children with feeding tubes, um, cardiac disorders, respiratory disorders, um, epilepsy, 
maybe children that require frequent medication administration, you can kind of look at us as, um, as it says on the, on the screen, you know, as a medical daycare, um, but we're technically, you know, what we would be called as a, as a PPEC. So um, unfortunately, you know, I know there are a lot of people on the line uh, on, the, on the call today talking about autism. And unfortunately, it's not a qualifying medical condition um, for the center. There has to be um, an underlying medical condition, but we do have children currently in the center that do have autism. So we are used to working with children that have autism. Um, we also do provide in the comfort of our own center therapy. So the children are able to receive the therapy while they're here. They can receive physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy. Um, we are also working on ABA and some other therapies as well. Um, we also provide transportation. So for some of the children that do attend school, uh, we can absolutely pick up, you know, the children from school uh, at the end of the day. And then for, you know, parents that are working or maybe they're going to school and furthering their education to make a living, you know, for the family, uh, we can drop the child back off at home at the end of the day. Now, for children that are not attending school, um, we, can, you know, we can obviously provide round trip from their home. Um, so the great thing is, is we always have medical staff personnel in the transportation at all times. Um, and children are able to attend the center up to six days per week. So um, they can attend up to 12 hours per day, six days per week with their primary physician's prescription. Um, we, everything that I've talked through from the skilled nursing services that we provide, the therapy, the transportation, Everything is 100% covered by Medicaid, which is awesome. Um, we do take some private insurances and some private pay, but primarily, um, you know, it will be uh, Medicaid that we that we accept. So, another thing just to mention too is uh, majority of our staff is bilingual, which I know is you know very important for just being able to have communication because we're very open um, in communicating with um, the children's primary physician, their specialty, as well as the parents, and just making sure that. Um, the plan of care that the child has is continually being updated. It's being followed. We're talking about it with their parents. We're talking about it with the primary physician, making sure that the children are being, you know, infants, children, babies, um, they're going to be able to meet their peak. Um, that's what our main, what our main goal is. So we want families to feel comfortable knowing that their child is at our center with a team that they can trust. We're working towards their goals that they have in mind, that we have in mind, and we're working together. We've put a lot of effort into the center. We opened up in February. Um, we had an artist come in. He designed the walls. It's very bright. It's very colorful. Um, we wanted, to, wanted it to be a fun place for, for kids to come to. We didn't want it to look like a hospital floor or a type of medical center. Um, so we were trying to make it look as, as bright and fun as possible. Um, if you do know any families um, that could benefit from our services, you know, we typically say, you know, we, we re recommend that the parents come in for a tour of the center. Um, they can bring their child as well, just so they can get a feel for the center. They can meet the staff um, and make sure that it's something that they see fit for them. Um, so if you do have, you know, anybody that you uh, would like to share us with, please feel free to do so. If you have any questions, let me know as well. I'll put my information in the chat below and uh, feel free to check us out on our website as well. Thank Thanks, you. Kelsey. Does anybody have any questions for Kelsey? All right. Um, next, we'll shift over to Liz Kennelly Smith. Um, Liz is going to share information about the YEL Lab vocational fit assessment tool. Uh, Liz is with the University of Florida, and I'm excited to hear more about the tool. Hi, Liz. Oh, you're muted. Hi, everybody. There you are. Hi. Thank you so much um, for having me um, today. Thank you to Keats for um, connecting me um, to the snack meeting um, and inviting me on such short notice. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, I am from the University of Florida. I actually um, did grow up in West Palm, um, so it's kind of um, fun hearing the New York accents because my parents um, also decided to move um, to Florida back in the 70s. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's fun to hear the places um, and hear those voices again, for sure. Um, so I'm here in Gainesville and I'm 
my background, um, I was an ESC teacher for 16 years, and now I'm involved in um, the Department of Occupational Therapy. And we run a really small lab called the YELL Lab, and it stands for Youth and Young Adult Empowerment, Leadership, and Learning. Um, and we're out of the College of Public Health and Health Professions. And um, what we do is we um, research and create um, either assessments, tools, and interventions to help um, youth and young adults with either developmental or intellectual disabilities. Um, so we have a couple active, um, actively running interventions. Um, one is called the, um, the Game Plan app, and it's a problem solving app for youth and young adults to practice um, kind of a problem solving um, process if they're having, you know, some difficulties. Um, and then we also have um, something called the PD Pro, that's this one right here, and we're developing um, a self-reported outcome measure for young adults with developmental disabilities. Um, I'm sure, you know, um, we've answered many questionnaires either as parents or professionals about young people with disabilities, but they don't actually get to report on themselves. So we're developing one for that. And then the big one that I'm going to talk to you about today is called the Vocational Fit Assessment. And this is um, a job matching tool that um, is already, it's vocfit.com, and I'll type that in the chat box for you all. It's already up and running. It's free. Um, anybody can use it, whether you are a teacher, a job coach, um, even a parent. We have some parents that are using it. And what it is, it's 133 item, um, items that you answer questions on over the internet. And it basically matches a young person's um, skills to very specific jobs. Um, the creators of the VocFit assessment, they went to ONET and the Bureau of Labor and Statistics, and they took all the tasks and skills that you need from anything from being a lifeguard to a teacher, to a vet tech, to hospitality, and they whittled it down and they put it into a magic cloud and you answer questions um, about the young person and whether they have a high ability in those areas, some ability or low ability. And it, it provides four reports. Um, one is an actual raw score report that just looks like this. These are the subscales. Um, so anything from communication to work structure, cognitive, um, self-determination type skills. So it gives us like a raw score. And this is what it looks like in bar graph form. So you can see that this person, this young person has their highest skills in self-determination and physical abilities and their lowest in safety. Um, it also provides <clears throat> a measurable skills change report. So say a parent can complete the vocational fit assessment about their young person and then so can a job coach and it'll show, oh, that's the Raider, sorry. That's the Raider agreement report. It'll show um, maybe how the parent answers differently from the job coach or the teacher. Um, we are trying to partner with lots of um, VR vendors across the state of Florida, and the ones that we've worked with so far really like the measurable skills change report, where that shows how a young person's um, skills and abilities might change over time. So, for example, you can give the VocFit assessment at the beginning of either a school year or an internship or even like a job, and then give it again a certain amount of time later and see how their skills have grown. And then the best one um, is the fourth report and it's actually a job matching report. And what it does is after you've um, completed the vocational fit assessment about a young person, you can put in very specific job titles. You can start maybe with their interest um, or what they might be interested in doing. Um, say I wanna be a lifeguard or a teacher aide. You can pick those jobs in the interface and then it's gonna give you this job matching report and it's color coded. Um, the greens are pros and strengths that that young person has. The yellows are areas of intervention where you know that they might have some ability in these skills, um, but they might need some extra um, like teaching, 
practice, support, and then oranges and reds are called needs and cons. And that doesn't mean that they can't do that particular job or work in that area, but what it means is as a supervisor or um, a job coach or a teacher, you might know that they need more supervision and assistance. Um, and then what's really great about those areas is in the report, it actually breaks it down. So these are all the skills that would be this young person's need for intervention. Um, so for example, um, say they finish their task and they're, they need a little bit extra learning of how to initiate a new task while they're working. Um, so it's really cool. Um, it looks really, this is just my PowerPoint. It actually looks a lot better when you get to the vocfit.com. So for this young person, I picked in a stock clerk or working at the governor's office. And based on their skills, um, the way I answered about their skills on the VogueFit assessment, this is what their vocational fingerprint looks like. So you can see that there's um, 24 pros and nine strengths and 57 areas um, for intervention. And even though there's a lot more yellow for both of these jobs, um, we actually like to see areas of yellow, especially if we are working with a person and because we know those areas of yellow for intervention are ways that they can actually grow. Um, and, you know, not just throw, you know, young people into, like I'm working with a family right now and he works at Perkins and he really feels like he's just cleaning all the time. And he's like, I know I can do so, so much more than cleaning. Um, so this, this is something that I can bring to that Perkins boss and say, hey, you know, he has all these um, strengths where he can do these things. Um, he works well with coworkers. He can follow the proper chain of command. Um, he can concentrate on a task over time. Um, and, and so he's, he's able to make eye contact. So maybe we, do, we need to put him up front a little bit more. So it almost becomes like this little mini resume of skills um, that young people can bring. Um, to places of, you know, volunteering or employment or internships and things like that. Um, so like I said, it's free, it's vocefit.com. Um, and how we're involved in the VogueFit is we are trying to make it better. So one way that we do that is we are conducting a um, longitudinal research study on the project. Um, and we want to, we've researched it with students that are involved in project search, but we're looking to expand more to young people who are getting services either through VR um, or extended transition under IDEA. So we're looking for young adults with intellectual disabilities who are 18 to 22 right now, but by September, it's gonna go up to 26 years old. Um, they have to be currently engaged in some sort of work activity. It can be anything from um, working chores at home, um, volunteering, things like that. And then a person who knows them well to be their partner reporter, either a teacher, a parent, a job coach, or an employer. And they complete an interview with us um, where the young person gets to answer questions about themselves. Um, and then the partner reporter completes the vocational fit assessment about that person. So one of the benefits of the study is if they participate, they get to walk away with their own vocational fit report. <clears throat> um, we meet three times. Um, it's a two year study. Um, and over the two years, we meet three times. And each time, each participant, the young person and the partner reporter will receive $40 for each interview up to $120 for the three interviews. Um, so we're looking, um, we're a small lab. There's only about like maybe four or five of us that are employed and, and working in this area, but we have this mission of um, inclusion, especially, you know, a lot of times at the university level, you know, it's kind of ivory tower and it's a lot different out there in the real world. Um, so we're looking to um, really first build relationships with um, other agencies and organizations that are out there um, mm. in that, you know, we are, we're employing young adults with intellectual and developmental disabilities in our lab. We have four employees right now um, that either have like 
a, a um, intellectual disability or autism or cerebral palsy, um, things along that line. Um, you know, we pay them, you know, in over minimum wage and um, we not only employ them, we also include them in the creation of these interventions and assessments that we're making. Like the PD Pro app one, they've created all the visuals and the wording and have given their input of how to make this more accessible um, for them. So I'm just super grateful um, to be included today because um, we're small, but I feel like we have like a really big heart and a big mission of, um, you know, kind of breaking out of the ivory tower of academia and, and getting out there and kind of seeing how um, we can not only do the research and create these things, but be a service to, to the community in the state of Florida. So um, I'll put my info in the chat box um, and anybody can reach out. We have flyers um, for families. We love to get in newsletters um, and, and email blasts and things like that. Um, I'm willing to travel. I haven't been to West Palm probably in like 15 years, um, but I'd love to get down there again. Um, so I'm open to all ideas, all for networking and working together. And I'm just grateful that I got to be here today. Thank you, Liz. That's really exciting. Um, I was thinking of two opportunities that this would be super useful. Um, just with the thought of the um, person answering the questions needing to know the individual pretty well. And sometimes that's difficult for VR agencies that are just receiving a referral and not necessarily knowing that individual. But with schools, um, they, after the, you know, the student is transitioning out of the school system, they need to put together that summary of performance. And I thought that this would be a great addition to their portfolio as part of that SOP so that they can take it with them to the agency as they're onboarding for VR services. So I thought that would be a great area um, we, to where we would it could be love done. Um, to get involved in schools. I know that schools have been overwhelmed right now. It's been very yes. difficult for us to, yeah. you know, um, understand, like, I mean, I was a teacher, I get it too, you know, yeah. like COVID has really like thrown a wrench in, into things like that. Um, mm -hmm. But we are open to all ideas. Um, if you know somebody, you know, that will pass out a flyer or, or yeah. want to get, you know, even more involved, um, we're just grateful. Yeah. yeah, I think the second opportunity I was thinking, um, there's agencies still in Florida that are um, providing 14C services, so sub-minimum wage, and that is phasing out. So agencies are looking for tools and programmatic ways to support those uh, adults that are aging out of those programs or not aging out, but transitioning out. So I thought that using this tool would be really helpful since those agencies know those folks really well and they are looking at employment opportunities in the community and really, and it's free. I mean, they, they yeah. can go on today and sign up and create an organization if they don't, if they need assistance, there's live um, support where you can click a link and, and schedule a time and be like, hey, I need help setting up my account. How do I generate this report? I mean, it's all there and available. Um, and it's always going to be free because the creators of it um, don't ever really plan they, they want it to be accessible to um, families and everybody, so. Great. Simone, you have your hand up and then Jennifer. I think Jennifer's hand went up first, unless she wants me to go ahead. <laughs> go ahead, Simone, it may be the same question. <laughs> sure, um, my question, well, um, with our program, um, Easter Seals has a program here locally, a hospitality training program in which they also help to um, place the, pe the people in, um, in you know, job placement post the training. Um, is this something that would, could be helped in that training process or? Absolutely. I mean, because you can put in all of those hospitality, whether it's, you know, um, housekeeping, restaurant, front desk, bellhop, um, all of those, like the landscaping, 
that comes. And for each one of those young people, you can answer those questions like very quickly. It does not, I know it's 133 questions, but it, you're just literally checking a box and then generate that report. And it, it could give you um, baseline data to see where they are in the beginning and what kind of job in that setting might fit them best first, and then show their growth over time. And, and they might get to do like different rotations, like in that like setting. Okay. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, so now the same question um, for the research participation, we're in Palm Beach County. Is there a way they can do it a uh, televisit? Yep, we Perfect. do it. It's all Zoom. Um, even a lot of we in Gainesville participants that we have in this area choose to do it over Zoom. Um, also, just because I guess it it's almost easier at this point than um, fighting Gainesville traffic and things like that. But um, yeah, we're fully capable to do it over Zoom, fully um, electronic, um, and it's usually it takes about an hour. It says okay. two hours in our, um, like all of our literature, like just in case the longest part of the whole thing is the informed consent process um, where we sit down with that young person and either their guardian or if they're their own guardian, their partner reporter, and we go through um, what the research study is about, make sure they understand, make sure they actually wanna participate, make sure they know that if they don't like it, once they started, they can stop and nobody's, you know, going to be mad at them or anything like that. Um, so that part takes the longest. And then once we get to the actual like vote fit part, it, it goes very quickly. Um, and I've just on a personal note, like I've really enjoyed it because it gives these young people the, the ability to answer about themselves um, part of the interview. And they, I, they really enjoy it. And they actually like to, they like to answer for themselves and then they like to hear what their partner reporter says their skills are. Um, and it's, it's been just a very um, uplifting type experience too. Perfect, great, that sounds, I almost wanna do it. <laughs> I mean, you can do it on yourself. I've done it on okay. myself. Like I know I don't take criticism from bosses. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so oh, much. You're welcome. I, um, yeah, when you um, get a chance, send the flyer to Carrie and she'll Absolutely. disseminate it. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. Next. Mary Ellen, go for it. Hi, Elizabeth. I'm Mary Ellen with FAU Card. And I know that some of our individuals, our adults, um, participated in the study. At least we shared your flyer. Um, we would, I would love you to maybe do a presentation for some of our staff, um, particularly that work with um, adolescents and adults. Um, I did put in the chat, um, uh, I can give you my information, but if you would um, provide our, your uh, email address, that would be wonderful. I think this would be sure. amazing. And we have a transition conference in the fall. So there's lots yeah. of opportunity to provide this information through transition training and supports to parents and adolescents and adults. So thank Absolutely. you. It looks like a wonderful project. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, I'll send you my email. Any other questions? All right. Thank you so much, Liz, for coming. You can come anytime. <laughs> All right. So next up, uh, Mary Ellen. Um, we're going to go back onto the topic of sharing resources. And so if you don't know about the card directory, uh, Mary Ellen's going to share it with you now. Um, and hopefully you all are listed as agencies um, and or have updated information if you're already listed. And so she'll uh, bring that up and show it to us now. I'm just going to take you to our website. Can you see this or let me share? There you go. So um, 
FAU card, um, many of you know that there's seven card centers across the state of Florida and FAU is one of the seven card centers. Each of us has an assigned region. So UM NSU card serves uh, Monroe, uh, Miami-Dade, Broward. We serve Palm Beach County and the Treasure Coast. And then there's USF card, UF um, Gainesville card, UF Jacksonville card. Um, UCF card and FSU card. And all of us share, all of us as part of our deliverables have what's called a directory of providers. And then we also post other resources. All of our materials, everything is free. Um, and we typically look at our data to see what the needs are. And any of you would be welcome to share um, your information on our um, directory of providers. This is just the directory. Uh, Jennifer Percival, if you want, I can put her email in there, or if you want to reach out to me, um, I can connect you with her. She's our assistant director, and she um, um, provides it. All of our, um, what we try to do is all of our materials for parents are in Creole, Portuguese, Spanish, and English. Right now, we have a Portuguese staff and Spanish staff. We had a Creole speaking person, and we have a community outreach position that we are post, uh, that's posted right now for a Creole speaking person. So, um, and all you do is you just click in, you can see the different um, types of specialties here, and then um, you can identify what the language is that you want. Um, and then also the agency. Um, additionally, um, through some of our research projects, we've also identified other needs that are on our website. And let me just go back a minute. Um, sorry, I can't see the um, scrolling, but let's see. Trying to go back here. Hmm. Let me stop share for a minute. What I wanted to do is to share with you um, some of the other resources that are on there. Um, we do, in terms of our, um, our directory providers, um, we do, if there's a complaint or a concern, um, we do um, um, investigate those and um, we occasionally have to remove people off of those, off of it. So we try to, um, we're pretty strict about that. Um, in terms of what the needs are. And let me see. Back on the website. Sorry about that. So some of the other um, information on here is we have other resources as well. And you can see information and resources um, what we'll, we often do is look at our research. We look at what the needs are. For example, this here is our pediatrician guide. Um, we're in the process of working actually with 211 Help Me Grow to get uh, physical copies in all of the um, pediatrician offices. Um, in our research, we found that many pediatricians, they understand kind of the stereotypical uh, manifestation of autism, but they're not identifying um, there, um, there's under, dis, under um, identification of blacks, Hispanics, and females. And many females are not identified till eight and 10 years old. Um, so what we're trying to do is to increase understanding about that. So that's one of our tools here that you will see on there. Um, we also have an early childhood guide. I know Natalie and others are familiar with that, but we have an early childhood resource guide that we developed. Um, that has lots of resources in here for parents, for um, early childhood providers. And so um, we try to look at um, what, what the needs are. You can see, oops. Sorry. And you can see, here's the table of contents for that. Let me see if I can get make it larger, but this is on here. It's on a link. Um, you're welcome to um, um, produce it if you need to make copies. We have copies that we printed and our goal is we're working with the pediatricians now. Our next step is to go ahead and, and to make sure that these materials are in the hands of early childhood providers as well. 
So that's some of the others. And you can see there's lots of other resources we have in here um, in terms of transition, um, dietary needs, um, all kinds of um, supports. We're right now working on a uh, resource for um, safety. Uh, we put together, we do a lot of training with law enforcement and other agencies. Uh, we do trainings with parents on wandering elopement. We have a training this fall that we're utilizing for um, teachers to, um, what we find is that, um, that wandering and elopement um, occurs in lots of other areas and that we can teach this skill to keep, teach kids to be in areas. So with the behavior analyst, we're working on that piece of it. So there's lots of resources on here. Um, we are, um, all of our services are free um, through um, FAU card. And also if parents have particular resources, um, for example, what we found in our research is that many black parents want black providers. They want black pediatricians. They want, they want um, neurologists that are also black so that they, um, they feel more comfortable. And so we have lists of others too, that um, uh, we also have a Spanish speaking um, uh, clinician that also has resources for Spanish speaking parents. And so we've been doing uh, resource fairs for parents um, online since COVID occurred. And so this fall we'll be doing um, one in Spanish for parents. And then in the spring, we hope to do one in Creole for Spanish. And then all of our trainings like our little owls training, our um, many of our trainings are in English, Spanish, Creole, um, and Portuguese. So those are the major languages that we've identified. So if there's anything that we can do to help you, or if any of you would like to be on this directory, um, I would encourage you just send me an email. My email is in the chat in the beginning, and I'll be happy to connect you with Jennifer and um, we'll go ahead and get you on our directory of providers. Thank you. Thanks, Carrie. Thanks so much, Mary Ellen. All right, um, Jennifer Harris, you're up next. Wanted to tell us about the 211 resource directory. Hi. Um, thank you, Mary Ellen, um, for your resource directory, because I often use it. So, what I do, kind of similar to FA card, but um, all disabilities really, I'm zero to 22, but all ages as well. Um, and some of them we don't have because we have a form they have to fill out. And it's right now just me sending out forms. And so if I don't get it back, I can't put them in our directory. So with that being said, I will show you what our directory looks like and how you can navigate it. Being in all honesty, I'd rather have you guys call. Um, I feel you get more of a sense of the person and the family's needs that you may not get using our directory. But in case you don't feel like talking to anybody, here it is. So you go to our main website, which you can either do 211palmbeach.org or 211treasurecoast.org. Um, Jennifer, are you sharing your screen? Oh, uh, let me get back to that. Now I am. Okay. So there's the website up at the top. Um, right now we have this rolling display, like we had back to school events, summer meals are going on. So you can just click on that. You can scroll down and get the back to school events. Um, certain recent news is down here. Um, our 988, which is the new suicide line three easy digits. Uh, we have a pediatric spotlight. We're on Twitter. But if you wanted to go to our online database, you would click on the get help now and find services online directory. 
So you can choose your zip. I'll just use mine. And then you can choose one of these icons, employment, transportation, income support, disaster, mental health. Mental health is a big one, so I'll click on that. So you can pick on one of these, anger management, support services, we'll say mental health. And, okay, there's my little slow computer. Hopefully people who are looking at this will have faster computers. Okay. So these are ones located closest to, oh, you can list by location, best match or alphabetically. And then it tells you like if you click on the Center for Child Counseling about the provider, what services they offer at the site, support groups, adolescents and teens, no charges, um, no fees charged. And you could go under each one and see that. Oh, <laughs> you don't need to see my calendar. <laughs> um, all right, so then if you go back, and say, oh, I really didn't need that or that didn't do. You can go back to the beginning. And say, you know what? I'm looking at my icons and I've clicked a couple and I don't see respite. So you can enter a custom topic here. And respite is a big one now that people are feeling more comfortable having people in their homes or going out. So respite and search. The ARC, it tells you all about what their services do. And before you even click on the ARC, in general, you can see, okay, yep, they do respite. Um, in-home respite, children's, and so say, yeah, I'll click that one. Or grandma's place, may not have heard of them. So that's children's out-of-home respite care. And then you can click more on them and see what they do. They don't have as many services, but children's out-of-home respite. So they provide services and their place of business. Um, there's no fees charged. It's ages zero to 12. Um, tells you what service area, what languages are spoken, who's the director, the contact person if needed. And so you guys, um, can use that, you know, anytime. Sometimes it's a little frustrating. And for our database, whether our resource center uses it or whether it's on our website, we update these regularly. We have a full-time database person um, who handles the things like if you need help with electric food, I handle the special needs resources. So I call at least once a year um, in their contract with us. They're supposed to notify us of any changes such as address, phone number, if they're not doing a certain service anymore. Sometimes we have to reach out more than once, so. Um, 
that is how we work our resource. And like I said, I use FAU's resources. They may have a few we don't have. I also get some great information from Denise's list. And then I'll send out the paperwork to somebody I see and try and get them onto our directory. Um, now we can't tell people who to go to recommend any particular service, but sometimes I ask, oh, well, how was, how was that resource? Just to keep in the back of my mind, like, oh, they really like that pediatrician or this indoor gym was really great for a couple of families. So that is our database and it feeds into um, the snack virtual um, hub. So anytime I make a change, it goes directly there. And when snack sends out their newsletter, um, you can update your information on there and they'll send me information. You can enter new information and you can always go online to add your agency um, or just call me. I'll make sure you get that agency survey. It's not too bad. It looks a little daunting, um, but it really isn't. So any questions? Thanks, Jennifer. Thank any you. Any questions for the card or 211 directories? I know I have them both bookmarked and I use them all the time. And now let me see if I can get out of the sharing. <laughs> all right, so as okay. Jennifer is closing out her share, um, we are going to introduce Carmen Brown next. And Carmen's gonna talk about Bright Feet Magazine um, before we do that, I wanted to take a quick poll. Um, so let's do that as Jennifer's closing out her share. Do y'all see the poll on your screen? Because I'm really curious, um, those of you that represent agencies, how much you allocate to print marketing and um, if that you know, is a good return for you, what outlets. Um, mm -hmm. So go ahead and fill those questions on your screen. I am not figuring this out. Can you unshare me? Okay, I might be able to kick you out. Let's see. Okay, please do. There we go, yeah. It's not letting me answer. The poll isn't? No. I see answers coming through. Is anybody else having trouble? I was having trouble too. Oh gosh, okay. Being super selective. <laughs> it says newbies is what it is. <laughs> it's only showing nine people. Um, Anyway, hmm. Because I see the questions and it says multiple choice, but it doesn't give me an option to. Does it say start? Was there like some kind of prompt to start answering the questions? No, I did no. not get that. Okay. Yeah, mine isn't clickable on anything. Huh, I wonder if it's just the kind of Zoom that y'all have. Oh, maybe because I am I might be a host. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, I'm a host too, oh, okay, Hi. okay. Here we are. Good call, good call, Rory, okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, I should have kept, um, 
I should have kept, I'll keep you, Carmen. There we go. And Rory. Uh -oh. Uh oh, I was answering. Uh, oh, it's moving around. Hold on. Sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. There we go. Thank you. Uh -huh. Oh, gosh. Okay. All right. And Jennifer. Okay. All right, so we'll give you guys about a few minutes. There's not very many questions. All right, success. There we go. We'll just take about one more minute. All right, does anybody need more time? All right, so here we are. So the first question was, how many participants, clients, families do you all serve? So we have a mixed group. Um, some of you are very large organizations and some are smaller. Um, so that's nice to see, a good representation. How much money do you allocate to print marketing on an annual basis? Um, so I did expect some to say none, uh, especially in the line of work, a lot of word of mouth. <laughs> um, and I'm kind of, I'm surprised to see seven and six of you uh, with pretty large budget budgets towards print marketing. Um, can I hear from someone who spends more than $2,000 on print? Can you give us some details, we, Mary Ellen? Yeah, we, um, we put that's in our marketing budget. So all of our brochures, we have materials that are for parents and that's a big part than materials for teachers. And then we have other materials that are print materials that we provide. Um, we've been doing um, a QR code too and leaving some of those things out when we go to community events so that, um, um, or a flyer with, um, uh, so that parents can take a, a, a photo of it. And that seems to be working um, um, because it, we just go through a lot of materials, you know, at different communities gotcha. and so forth. So we're trying to look at other ways that because it, it is costly. Yeah. And I think um, I love that you shared that. And that's really important to look at also now after COVID. I originally when I wrote this question, I was thinking more of um, print uh, collateral. So, so advertising in, in magazines and things of that nature. Um, does anybody have a large budget for that for specifically advertising in publications? No. Okay. This is um, uh, go ahead. We have obviously with the size of us now, um, we do have a, a, a full department and advancement department. And so I'm not entirely sure of what their budget is, but it's definitely over $2,000. Um, and so we have worked towards being in different conference um, programs for large conferences. Um, I don't know if anybody has seen, we have billboards now that are up around the county, um, actually around the state for all of the arcs. Um, but yeah, the programs for conferences are really where we're seeing a lot of um, team who are interested in working. Um, you know, people who kind of had, didn't realize how many arcs there are throughout the state and things like that. So um, that has definitely been a big one for us. Also, um, 
you know, we, we, it's not print, but we are, we do have a radio commercial now. We um, are looking to get into different types of magazines that go out throughout the community. So it's kind of a work in progress, but um, it's, it seems to be working. That is great information. And we love learning from you all. Um, if any agencies are interested in more information, um, Arc of Palm Beach County, um, you can reach out to their team to find out more. So um, billboards and radio and all of that, that's wonderful. Thank you for sharing. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see which outlet produces the highest return. So free social media. Um, a lot of you feel that that's a high ROI. Word of mouth, of course, especially um, since families are so connected and that's how they feel comfortable um, accessing services through other families' recommendations. Um, print media is pretty high. Um, E-newsletters, email campaigns, and direct mail being the lowest. Um, and paid digital marketing as well. So I'm considering that like your Facebook boosts and those kinds of things um, is pretty low. Uh, some folks said other. Are there other outlets that have been really good for you? Um, maybe it's the billboard. Uh, what other options out there? Have you seen a high return? Uh, we see we use Eventbrite for registration for events, and so that has helped with other kinds of things and sharing information. Our trainings, um, the flyers, and so forth that um, through our through Eventbrite, um, we're seeing huge numbers. Um, before maybe we had a hundred attendants, now we have 400, 450, 500 attendants. So, wow. That's incredible. Congratulations. Part, part of that is we also are doing it. Um, a lot of our training events are recorded and they're offered in more flexible venues. So um, it, it's offered for the entire month. And that also, I think, is it's much more convenient for people and they don't have to drive and they can do it at night or on the weekends or when it's convenient for them. Great information. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to close out this poll and that um, gives Carmen a little bit of information. I'm going to um, cue Carmen up now, spotlight her for her. For, oh, and then I need to um, add you as co-host again. Let's do that. And is Rory added as co-host as well, too? Oh, that's right. Okay, thank you. Yes, Rory's going to be helping me today. Okay. All right. There we are. Okay. Um, take it away. So Carmen and Rory are with Bright Feast and they'd be happy to tell you all about it and how you all um, can advertise and find information through their publication. Wonderful. Thank you so much uh, for introducing us. Uh, my name is Carmen. I am from Bright Feats. We are a special needs directory that's beginning its 17th year in publication. Uh, we, prior to COVID, we were in the Treasure Coast Palm Bay area, and we're very excited to be returning to that area. Um, we advertise in the Central Florida area. We currently uh, distribute up to 220,000 copies annually through the hospitals, providers, offices, early, early learning coalitions, public schools, um, also, we've been in contact with realtors before, also with libraries too. We are a completely free reprinted resource directory that is given to families. Um, and how we do our funding is through paid advertising. Um, I do know as a special needs mom myself, I have three kids that are on the spectrum varying different degrees. Um, they'll be three, two, and 14 next month. So August is a very busy time in my household. Um, but we do have, uh, we would love, now that we're reconnecting with you all, we would love to schedule a time to speak with you all, share more information to, um, so we can get more resources out to the families. I'm originally from Arkansas. I was a develop, um, I worked as a, worked in a developmental preschool uh, until my son got a little bit older and he started having additional more health, um, health issues. And so I had to withdraw from that. Um, my husband is military, so we've moved around and I was a um, RBT at an ABA company prior to starting working at Bright Beats. 
Um, my whole mission has been to, I remember when my son got the diagnosis and it was just here, have the diagnosis and um, figure it out on your own. And that's where it started with this, we need to help families and we need to figure out a way to help families better than what we're doing. Um, so when I moved to Florida is when I learned about Bright Beats. I was like, ooh, what is this? And so uh, that's how I got connected with Rory and was able to learn more about it and how we can get it out into the community. Uh, like I said, we're serving nine counties in the Central Florida area, and we'll be serving uh, nine. We'll be doing the Palm Beach, Okeechobee, um, Blades, St. Lucie, Martin, and uh, there's one, the High, Highlands is where we're going to be expanding to as well. Um, so I would like if you guys to share my screen with you. Roy, will you? It's, my, it's helping me today. She's amazing. Um, this right here is the, we have a printed directory and we have an online directory. So this is actually viewing our screen of what the online directory is. So these are our two publications right here that we have in the Central Florida area. We have the early childhood that covers ages from birth to five. And then we have the traditional that covers from five to adulthood. And we print twice a, distributions twice a year in April and also in October. So we'll open, yeah. So this is the cover of the uh, early childhood. And we're just gonna flip through a couple pages so you guys can see it. So it has, of course, the table contents. We have different ad sizes, ad size opportunities that vary. Um, the couple that you're seeing on the left-hand side, those are fourth of a page ads. And the help me grow that's at the bottom left-hand, that is a half a page ad. We also feature usually about three to five articles for families to give them additional information. Like this one right here um, was from the Early Learning, Early Learning Coalition of Polk County. Then um, it's also, yeah. So this is a, what our directory listings look like. And our directory listings, they're um, $200, but we also have some media kits that start as low as $35. So it shows the name, what counties they cover, the address, the contact information, and also has the logo. So you see card is on there. And then there's our PPEC for the Central Florida area. There's a Children's First, there's a couple more, but we've got Children's First in there. And then I wanted to show you some of the different categories. Like this was the community resource that we have. Then we also have um, education, which is where we could list um, some of our private schools are listed in there. Uh, charter schools are listed in here. Um, any of our medically fragile schools or programs are also gonna be listed. Sometimes they're listed in a couple of different areas. This is another one of our articles we have. Here's the medical one um, that talks about diagnostic, but also visual health. Um, there's Advent Health that's talk about their therapies that they offer. And see, there's the matching ad for the visual health. That's about a half page ad right there. So this is the medical section and there's another article. Um, and then this is talking about Able United. They were actually on the front page of our traditional um, publication. This is where it goes into professional services. And then with, and here is therapy. So each therapy is listed with the course of directory listing, their logo, and then with their ad, if their therapy, they'll be listed in the uh, corresponding section. And I think that's the last page. That's the back. Yeah, this is the back. That's an article actually that I wrote was the alphabet soup. I did that when I was in uh, Arkansas because 
I got tired of everyone speaking all these different acronyms to me that I didn't know what they were saying. <laughs> so I just made it easier. Start off just for myself, just better be able to understand. So that is our early childhood. So the one that will be coming to the Treasure Coast area is not going to be split. It will it will have both, but it's going to be so we'll have early childhood and we'll have traditional all mix. So basically birth through adulthood. So it'll be a mixture of services, but the layout will be very similar to what you all just saw. As he talks about, see, like this right here is Cell, the Center for Independent Living. That's a full page ad right there. Uh, excuse me. And then there's the Able United, there's their ad. And then they're also on the cover as well, too. And then still, look, if you have any, I think, oh, Rory, can you go back to the um, Cell one real fast? It was in, yeah, it's all the sec by table contents in this one. Because I meant to show the QR code. Yeah, on this on this ad, they um we are able to include QR codes and ads as well, too. And when you advertise um with us, it's not only just you get your printed copy, you'll also get, like I said, the online, the online copy. And then also you will get social media is also provided with it. And then also we have a, um, it's a searchable is what it's called as a national provider database. And you'll get a verified listing in it. So anyone can say the Arc of Palm Beach, they can type that up if they're advertised and then the Arc of Palm Beach will be bumped to the top as a verified listing or Early Steps Treasure Coast will be bumped to the top as a verified listing. And so each of our media kits are offered in, um, you could do the lump sum or you could do a monthly payment, which sometimes it's easier on the budget. But our whole premise is that we just want to get as much information out to families as possible. So thank you all so much for having us. So we really appreciate it. And it's a pleasure to meet all of you all. Any questions for the Bright Beats team? All right, well, thank you. Sorry. Thank you for sharing that information. Yes, did I hear a question? Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't get a chance to raise my hand. Um, Go ahead, I know you on. said you were expand expanding to Treasure Coast Palm Beach County. Um, yes. I'm sorry, I missed when you said that was going the timetable for that. Oh, October. This October. Okay, thank you. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> our first, no problem. Sorry, I may not have said that. Yes, our first public our publication will be coming out October 1 is when the distribution will begin. And it'll be going out through the um, schools, the early learning coalitions, um, hospitals, providers' offices. Thank you. And the deadline is now. Um, the, the drop dead deadline is September 1st, but you want to do it a little sooner so we can get your graphics and information up. And if you sign up right now, you'll get two months of digital marketing for free. Yes, thank you, Rory. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thank you all for coming. Um, I had reached out to a few others that I wanted to kind of go through just in case um, y'all are making a list um, and putting together your advertising budget. Um, I don't know if you're familiar, but there's other organizations that also have newsletters. If you don't have flyers um, as a part of our snack uh, weekly newsletter, you can definitely do that. Um, we, we have a large following. Um, I know that Gold Coast Down Syndrome also has a newsletter um, that they send out. Um, CARD sends out a newsletter every, what is it, month? Three times a year. Three times a year. Um, so go ahead and if you have any information about your program, you can um, give that to Mary Ellen. Um, also, if you're interested in reaching out to Children's Services Council, they have a newsletter, so they may include you in theirs. Um, and then also the organization Birth to 22, um, you can send your information to them. Um, oh, and Bright Feats also has a quarterly, quarterly newsletter Carmen just put in the chat as well. 
Um, so those are newsletters. Next one will go out August 15th. Does anybody else have any newsletters that you all collect resources and send out electronically and email? I know Millery does that through her emails. Okay. Um, yep, 211. Okay, so you guys put together a newsletter as well. Yeah, I, so far I email it to parents. Some agencies have requested it. So you guys have my contact information if you want to forward any newsletters and. Okay, great, and I, thank you. I, I want to share, I want to thank um, both Jennifer and also um, Carrie for always sharing our flyers that we send. And if you would like, I'd be happy to share. I have a separate email distribution list that I send flyers out to the community. And so if anyone wants to be on that, I'd be happy to share, um, share flyers as well. Awesome, thank you. Um, some of the other magazines I wanted to share information about. Um, so let me do that here. Okay. Sorry, having trouble driving. Zoom today. All right, so let's share here. Okay, so um, the first one is, are you familiar with the autism notebook? Those of you that work in the field of autism. Um, so they were on hold a bit um, and Lori wasn't able to join us today, but I wanted to share information about the autism notebook magazine. They are going back into publication. They took a hiatus during COVID. Um, so if you'd like to write an article or put information together, um, you can see that they, distribute 15,000 copies in print through Broward County, South Palm Beach County, and North Miami. Um, so you can, look, um, you can look them up. You can also, um, I found a couple other magazines. So there's Exceptional Parent Magazine um, that you can look into if you wanna advertise in print. Uh, a large um, following, uh, Disability Scoop, if you're not familiar, they are wonderful. They have an e-newsletter um, I also really enjoy their articles that come through and they also have a nice portal for advertising open positions. If anybody has, uh, is looking for teachers or therapists, um, Disability Scoop has a large national following. Um, so you can investigate advertising with them. Um, this is, what is this? Um, parenting, sorry, I'm trying to move it out of my, parentingspecialneeds.org. So that's another online magazine. This one is Family Life. So South Florida Family Life. Um, I, I don't know where that's distributed, but I have seen that around doctor's offices, hospitals. Um, so you can go ahead and advertise there, uh, especially for early learning providers. And then, um, also, this is eParent. So if you're interested in looking up eParent um, and advertising or putting information, um, submitting information through them. Does anybody have any other resources um, that you found that have been helpful? For the good of the group. Oh, there is... Um... Carmen, you sharing something with us? Oh, am I on mute? Okay. <laughs> I thought you had a revelation. I was waiting for it. I did. I did. I was, but I could, I thought I was off mute. Anyway, sorry. Um, we were on the edge of our seats. <laughs> there is a, a free publication to families. It's all type it in the chat. It's called okay. Exceptional Needs Today. And they okay. uh, print a publication every other month, but in the middle of the every, yeah, every other month, they print a publication, it's all online. And then in between months is a newsletter. Wonderful, thank you. Any other good tidbits? Um, I didn't even go into social media because I know there's thousands of Facebook groups, um, but I thought that was a whole nother topic. Um, but obviously, you know, when we have programs and conferences, um, the ones that do allow posting 
for services and programs, we, we do use those Facebook groups as well, which is great. All right. Well, if there's no other questions, um, does anybody have an idea for our topic next month? Have you um, been thinking about something in the back of your mind and think to yourself, have you thought to yourself, wow, that would be a great snack meeting topic? If you do come up with something, let me know. Um, you know, we come up with topics based on your interests. So if there's something that you'd like to learn about or a resource that you'd like to look into, um, parent training options, okay. Thank you, Priscilla. Um, there's definitely lots of parent trainings out there. So I think that could be a really nice way of us to organize um, and put together who's doing what, where. Are they in person? Are they online? What topics? Okay, parent training, is everybody okay with that? All right, so we will um, put that together. If you want to present your parent trainings and what you do um, as a panelist, then let me know. I will put my email in the chat. Parents new to the special needs community. Okay, yeah, great, good to know. Um, and it's overwhelming as, you know, we find one rabbit hole and then you get lost and then there's another one. So maybe we can organize things. Um, and I encourage you maybe as we are doing that, um, let's invite some parents that haven't participated in SNAC because I think that sometimes folks think it's just for providers and that's not necessarily the case. SNAC is a forum, and so if there's one topic that interests you, you can hop on in one month, and if it doesn't relate to you, you can skip a month, um, but we're always here for you. Community training needs and professional training needs with ASD, that's another good one, yeah. Thank you, Mary Ellen. All right, well, um, have a great afternoon, and we'll see you next month. This meeting will be recorded, so you can um, go ahead and share it if you are not on the newsletter, um, you can send us an email to be able to get on the newsletter and we have the recording of each meeting as part of that. And then if you want to send us flyers for your programs and services, we can put those on the newsletter as well. The SNAC newsletter is every month digital via email. So thank you all for coming. Bye, nice to meet you all.